welcome to the Year of the Griffin Deep Dive here at BlizzCon Line. I'm Brian Kibler, and joining me today to talk all things Griffin is Hearthstone game director Ben Lee. Ben, how you doing? Are you excited as I am about all this? Uh, I'm great. So I'm super excited to show and talk about what, all the new things that we're working on. It's going to be a big year for us, and we hope you're going to enjoy it. Yeah, there's already been a lot revealed so far. The year of the Griffin, which is going to usher in the newest phase of Hearthstone. We're, we're looking at a new core set, mm -hmm. a classic format, a new expansion that brings us back to the Barrens, yep. kicking off a year-long celebration into the roots of Warcraft. And on top of all of that, a new game mode, another new game mode mm -hmm. in Mercenaries, which I know I can't wait to hear more about. That's right. This year's story is all about going back to the roots of Warcraft. It's a little bit different in terms of how we deliver the story, though. Rather than a specific year-long narrative, we're telling small stories about individual characters that make up a bigger whole. So there's 10 brand new characters, and they're going to be featuring across all of our game modes. We'll obviously be telling their story through single player, which we'll be telling a little bit more about later in the show also. All right, so I think the obvious next question is, who are these 10 characters, and uh, you know, how do they play a part in all this? So we're not ready to reveal too much about who they are, but we will be showing you one of them in uh, our deep dive video for the Forge in the Barrens expansion, which I'll throw over to de game designers Liv Breeden and Joe Killian now to tell you more about. Welcome everyone! Remember to keep your tusks and hands inside the tower at all times, and absolutely no spells of any class. I'm your fearless, battle-ready tour guide, Joe Killian. And I'm your trainee guide, Liv Breeden. Uh, it's my first day, so cut me some slack, okay? <laughs> She's kidding. We don't cut slack out here. Which reminds me. <clears throat> By attending this tour, you agree not to hold us responsible for any bodily injury sustained, including, but not limited to, coolborn impalements, raptor bites, centaur raining parties, RPI pecking, or just falling off this tower. Has, has that ever happened? Just ask my last tour. <laughs> Well, before we begin our Wyvern Eye tour, please direct your attention to this brief orientation video. For a hero of the Horde, all roads lead to the crossroads. You have come for adventure. But the Barons wants to break you. Your axe must be sharp. Your wits must be keen. And your heart must be mighty. is Hearthstone's latest expansion. This vast sun-scorched land brings discovery and danger beyond your imagination's grasp. The Barrens is the anvil upon which the Horde as we know it was founded. It's a place where eager-eyed mercenaries can begin their journey to greatness, embarking on treacherous paths to sharpen their skills and weapons as they forge ahead. Speaking of which, I think I see one of Hearthstone's newest mercenaries out in the crossroads. Brukan! Brukan is a shaman legendary minion that gives your nature spells plus three damage. But what's a nature spell, you ask? New to Hearthstone are spell schools. Just like minion types, spells that fall into one of seven schools will get a new classification. Spell schools include arcane, fell, fire, frost, nature, holy, and shadow. Some classes, like Mage, have access to multiple spell schools. Let's try it out. Chain Lightning is a shaman nature spell. It deals two damage to a minion and a random adjacent one. But there's more! It's also a ranked spell, meaning it upgrades when you have five mana and again at 10 mana. Ranked spells grow in power as the match progresses, so they remain useful in the early, mid, and late game. Sometimes it's worth holding out a little bit longer to use one of these spells. The results can be quite shocking. Sounds like those Quillboard didn't learn their lesson. Hey Liv, 
Aren't you a warlock? Well, I don't want to brag or anything, but, uh... Ranked spells can be rather impressive, like Imswarm. It's a fell warlock spell that summons a 3-2 demon. Since it's also a ranked spell, it continues to improve at 5 and 10 mana. The more mana in play, the more impact you'll have. Now is the part of the tour where I like to point out some of my favorite sites. Ooh, wow. All I see are a bunch of rock formations. Yeah, but most people take them for granted. Look, someone needs our help. She's surrounded, we gotta do something. Do what? She's a goner. Nothing left to do but let out a desperate prayer. This holy priest spell restores five health to each hero. Might be just what you need to get out of a prickly situation. I don't think I'm cut out for this, Joe. Do you think she's gonna be okay? Of course! When the Barons gets the best of you, you can always pay a visit to the Spirit Healer! Spirit Healer is a neutral minion that benefits from a specific spell school. After you cast a holy spell, give a random friendly minion two health. Yeah, but I don't think that's gonna help that poor troll. <laughs> Joe, do you hear somebody weeping? Like the longing cry of a heartbroken lover, desperate and alone? In the Barrens, always. That's Man Crick. Hey, buddy, cheer up, we'll find her! Man Crick is a legendary neutral minion who got separated from his wife during a quillbore attack, and he can't find her. Rumor has it she was last seen somewhere in your deck. What does she look like? Ah, uh, she's about yay big, greenish, looks kind of like a pincushion full of quills. You can't miss her. I think I found her. Yeah, oh, we might want to give him some space. That's the Barons, though. It's tough. Will you get attacked out here? Probably. Will it be painful? Will it? Absolutely! But every battle you survive is a lesson learned. Just take it from Blade Master Samuro! He's a legendary neutral minion with Rush, but there's more. The Barons have hardened him. He laughs in the face of danger with Hearthstone's newest keyword, Frenzy. The first time one of these minions survives damage, they go into a frenzy. In Samuro's case, he deals his attack damage to all enemy minions. When you pick a fight in the Barrens, you better be ready to finish it. Otherwise, you could wind up with an even bigger problem on your hands. It's plain to see with Druid of the Plains. The Druid of the Plains is a Druid minion with Frenzy that transforms into a 6-7 Kodo with Taunt. Crikey! You can say that again, but please don't. There's plenty of wildlife in the Barrens that would be pleased to eat you, like this, Sunscale Raptor. It's a hunter minion with frenzy that will shuffle another Sunscale Raptor into your deck with a permanent plus one plus one. Folks, hold on to your hats. I can't believe this. I heard he was in the Barrens, but I didn't think the rumors were true. This minion was prepared for Illidan. I heard Ragnaros looks under his bed for this minion. A Noyatron doesn't bother him. A minion that needs no introduction, the myth the legend, the peon! What do you want? Zug Zug, something does need doing. Don't underestimate the backbone of the Horde army. He's got frenzy. If he survives damage, he'll add a random spell from your class into your hand. Well, can he help us get out of here? This place isn't safe. Look down there, we're surrounded by Razor Mane Raiders. By what? Razor Main Raiders! Now you've got it. The Razor Main Raider is a neutral minion who will attack a random enemy when he goes into a frenzy. Well, folks, that's just about it for our tour. Oh, thank you, Og. No lie, you're the best tour group I've ever had. Everyone, give yourselves a hand. Where did you get that? It's a souvenir. And we have a special souvenir for anyone who thinks they can brave the Barons. Starting today, players that log in will receive a free legendary card, Shadowhunter Vol'jin. When you play Vol'jin, you can swap a minion from your board with one in your hand, or make your opponent swap one of theirs. Thanks for joining us. Please use the handrail as you descend the tower, exit through the gift shop, and put yourself to the test. 
do you have what it takes to be forged in the barrens? I don't think I'm cut out for this, Joe. What? You're doing great! Most trainees are eaten on their first day. Forged in the Barrens. I gotta say, I love this take on kind of classic Warcraft. Yeah, you know, someone who played not only a lot of Hearthstone, but a lot of World of Warcraft. Having things like Mancrick and his wife in there, that, mm -hmm. that's really a callback I love. Yeah, we're huge fans of the Warcraft license, obviously. Hearthstone has its own characters and its own identity, but it's very rooted and grounded in Warcraft. And we want to make sure we're delivering on that over this next year. So we're really excited to see how players react to it. And, uh, you know, it, I think this trailer specifically, it's super epic. And I think it's my favorite of all time. Yeah, it's definitely cool to have all the lore and everything, but I like to play the game too. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, yeah, really excited to see the cards and also see how those cards interact with the new core mm -hmm. set. Because, you know, as someone who has been a very vocal advocate of the idea of a core set for a long really? time... <laughs> I don't think I've heard Brian talk about that. Have you guys? I don't I, think so. I don't, I don't believe you. No. I don't believe you. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's going to be... It's going to be really cool to see what that means and how all these cards interact. So what can you tell me about that as well as the upcoming classic format? Uh, the core set's super, super interesting. It's a big revolution for Standard, and we're really excited to see the effect it has on the game. You know, there's going to be some things that you know and love, which is still there, but some of those things that have become staples, they're going to go out too. Variety, I think, is one of the biggest and uh, you know, strongest parts of Hearthstone, making for different experiences. And you know, the classic set and the basic set, they've done awesome work for the game. They really have. But it's time for something new. And to give you more information about that now, we're going to hand things over to game designers Ryan Masterson and Alec Dawson. Thanks, Ben. Hi everyone, I'm Ryan Masterson, a game designer on the Hearthstone team. And I'm Alec Dawson, senior game designer on Hearthstone. We're here to give you a closer look at the new core set in classic format. Ryan, give us the rundown. What's the core set? Well, we'll be replacing our basic and classic card sets with a single set of 235 cards known as the core set. This new core set is a revamped take on well-known cards from basic, classic, and wild that are buffed, revived and revolutionized, plus the addition of 29 completely new cards. We're looking to better match the set with modern gameplay. We also want to provide newer players with a strong starting point for their collection. And we want to create a structure that can change and shake things up from year to year. One way that we're modernizing the set is by not carrying forward some of the weaker and more redundant cards like Frostwolf Grunt and Coldshire Footman. Many of these cards don't serve a significant purpose for the set. We also want to make the game more approachable for returning players, or players stepping into the tavern for the first time. And this is something we're going to be updating yearly, so it gives us a lot of flexibility and tools to work with when building out new archetypes for our classes. Access to the core set is completely free, correct? All earned completely free. Just like the basic set of cards, you'll gain access to the core set as you level up each class in-game. We want to make this easy, even for newer players. Much like the basic cards, you'll earn access to all of the cards for each class by the time you reach level 10 with it. Neutrals will unlock alongside these class levels, with all of those being unlocked before even needing to unlock all the class ones. If you've played Hearthstone before and you already hit these milestones, great! Your collection will be automatically updated to include the new core set cards when it launches. New players will be able to earn the cards for each class quite easily. If you're looking for all the details, please check out the core set blog. And no matter how you look at it, there's never been a better time to get into Hearthstone. I think it's time we start looking at what exactly the core set entails. A lot of fan favorites are sticking around. Let's talk about those first. Fireball and Tyrion Fordering. So when you're choosing which cards to keep in the core set, why Fireball, why Tyrion Fordering, why something else? Yeah, there, there's a lot of favorites and familiar staples that are sticking around. We do want to mix things up, and we, we also want to make sure that each class is still recognizable and well-defined. With all that in mind, Fireball and Tyrion are examples of cards that fit well and they're still around. In total, a little more than half of the reworked core set are returning basic and classic cards. And we'll also have some iconic wild favorites moving into the core set. For this year, Tomb Pillager and Annoyatron are going to be in the core set. Ryan, when you're looking at which cards to bring in back into Standard, what are you thinking? Well, there's a lot of reasons that we would want some of these wild cards to come into the core set. For starters, we get to see these cards used in a new context, something different than when they were originally released. It's a known card, but in an unknown format, and that's a cool dynamic. Tomb Pillager is a great fit with that in mind. 
and can potentially mesh with and enable strategies that will be available in the new standard environment. We also get to introduce newer players to some favorites of old. Maybe a card has great class fantasy or effects, or maybe an older card can help enable new archetypes. Or in some cases, maybe they're just timeless pieces of Hearthstone, like Anoyatron, and now we get to see it in more Hearthstone games. <laughs> I'm so excited for Anoyatron to come back. It's one of my favorite cards. Hello, hello, as much as we can. Um, okay, so as mentioned earlier, some of the core set also includes familiar faces with some big updates. We saw serious value in keeping some of these cards in standard rotation, but recognized the need to buff some underperforming cards, and this new core set was a perfect opportunity for that. Assassinate, one of Rogue's basic cards, is getting an update, as well as Menagerie Warden, a druid card in Wild that's coming into the core set. Yeah, Assassinate, it's one of the many simple cards that does a great job communicating class fantasy and identity. But it's more than just a little bit weak. Even as an unconditional baseline effect, it's never really seen play, and these are the type of buff opportunities that we've looked for. We think this will raise the floor of power for new players and start their collection off on a good footing, without invalidating cards and strategies from expansion sets. There are also some wild cards that did something we wanted to include in the core set, but in some cases didn't do it well enough to fit the modern game. Menagerie Warden is one of them, and it's been adjusted to be cheaper, slightly smaller, and, and overall more powerful and fluid. All these well-known cards will do a great job of creating the building blocks for the future standard gameplay. But there's a few big things left to talk about, including lots of changes in Shaman, brand new cards, and the revamp of the legendary dragons. And let's start with Shaman. So you told me that Shaman's gained a new totem in their hero power pool, as well as some changes to cards with overload. Shaman is seeing more changes in the core set than many of the other classes, including that change to their hero power. Cards that fit well will remain, and in some cases have been adjusted to be more consistent role players in Shaman's toolkit. Among those are the Overload cards, Feral Spirit, Lightning Storm, and Earth Elemental, which have each been buffed. Shaman's hero power is also seeing a minor change. It'll still summon one of four random totems, but Wrath of Air Totem will be removed and replaced. It will be replaced by the new Strength Totem, which can buff your other minions, including the other basic totems, and turn them into combat threats to battle enemy ones, or even threaten the enemy hero in a way that makes them much less ignorable as a group than they used to be. That's so exciting. So many changes coming to Shaman. I'm especially excited for buffed Lightning Storm. <laughs> that sounds great. I think it's something that players have been asking for for quite a long time. But en enough about Shaman, let's talk about brand new cards yeah. that are coming to core for the first time. So out with the old and in with the new, let's kick it off with the legendary rogue minion, Vanessa Van Cleef. Vanessa Van Cleef is the daughter of Edwin Van Cleef and is taking his place in the core set, just like she took his place as the leader of the Defias Brotherhood. Unlike Edwin, she's not much of a brawler. She is much more tactical in her approach and skilled at making poisons, especially those that attack the mind. In Hearthstone terms, all of this combines to create a very powerful and skill-testing new legendary card, capable of turning your opponent's power against them. Now, let's take a look at the new Shaman minion, Novice Zapper. An early game spell damage minion for Shaman. Novice Zapper plays well with damage spells when you're going for lethal or casting that buff lightning storm. One of our early goals for the core set was to give each class a one drop that tells you what our classes are about. So Novice Zapper hits on both the overload and spell damage themes going on in Shaman, making it a really great addition overall for the class. Kicking it over to Warlock, we have a new discard inclusion, Felsal Jailer. The Felsal Jailer is a new five mana Warlock minion that can lock up an opponent's card until they can get rid of the Jailer itself. With the right timing or with clever play, it can deny an opponent's play long enough to secure a victory. The last completely new card we have to show today is the neutral legendary minion, Overlord Runthak. Overlord Runthak is here to rally your minions, bringing hand buffing synergies into the core set. You know, hand buffs are something we talk about all the time on the team as being a very standard part of Hearthstone now, and it's kind of core to the Hearthstone gameplay. So we wanted to provide a solid card in the core set for future hand buff decks to take advantage of. This makes it easier for us to design into these strategies without having to craft new hand buffing cards every time we want to explore the archetype. So why all these cards are seriously awesome. Ben introduced something earlier that might just take your breath away and replace it with fire. 
we're excited to introduce a completely refreshed look at the Legendary Dragons. The Legendary Dragon cards from the classic set are an iconic cycle in some of our favorite Hearthstone cards. They're big and powerful, but for many of these cards, they haven't seen play for a long time. We wanted to breathe some new life into them. Ysera fits this category, and the new version will give players the opportunity to more consistently take advantage of her powerful dream cards. In some other cases, the dragon may have seen more recent play, but only in very niche deck styles or OTK style decks. And for Malagos especially, that's been his entire identity for a long time. Malagos' new version is more different than the original, but leaves no doubt that he is indeed the very aspect of magic. Ultimately, we've created new versions of these legendary dragon cards because we think they're awesome. We hope existing and new players alike will have all new reasons to fall in love with these characters the same way that we have. Brand new cards, changes to the legendary dragons, there's so much coming into the core set, I'm really excited. But a lot of you are probably thinking, what's happening to all my basic and classic cards? Okay, so as mentioned earlier, some of these iconic cards are staying in core, while others will be rotating into wild. But there's actually one new place you'll be able to play them, our classic format. That's right. While we're looking at Hearthstone's future, we're also recognizing Hearthstone's past, and the classic format is our take on that. With the new classic format, you'll be able to relive the early Hearthstone experience with iconic cards and combos from launch. This mode brings back cards in their original forms, reverting any alterations so the cards appear in their original state. Leroy Jenkins, back to four mana. Blade Flurry, two mana, and it hits face. It's gonna be introduced to the game as part of an overall adjustment to playable formats. Classic, Standard, Wild, and Casual will be the four main formats available to players. Classic's reward systems, rank systems, and seasons function the same as Standard and Wild, and Classic cards will appear in their own section within the Collection Manager. With the new Classic format, players will have the opportunity to travel back in time and revisit some of Hearthstone's brightest stars in their earliest incarnations. And with the new core set, players will earn a card set curated specifically for today's gameplay experiences. There's never been a better time to play Hearthstone. Thank you for hanging out with us today on our deep dive all about Hearthstone's new core set. We can't wait to welcome you into the classic format and get your hands on the new core set when the year of the Griffin begins. Wow, there's mm -hmm. a lot to talk about coming yep. out of that. You know, obviously, uh, some cards going away, some cards coming in from other sets. You know, mm -hmm. Tron can say hello once more, <laughs> or, or twice more as the case may be. But uh, obviously, you know, I'm someone who's been super passionate about the idea of a core set for a very long time, and mm -hmm. this kind of hits all the boxes of keeping the game fresh every year, yep. right? Like, this isn't just, okay, we're revamping mm -hmm. the classic and basic sets. This is, we are changing the way that the core experience of Hearthstone works, such that every year it's gonna be updated by itself. Yep, absolutely. One of the things we wanna do as well is make sure that we're providing building blocks throughout the year. When we're thinking about expansions, we have different archetypes for different classes that we're thinking of. There's not always the base cards for you to have to put into those, which means we might need to dedicate an entire class's cards to just one archetype, which honestly isn't the most exciting thing. Having variety, it's one of the big strengths of Hearthstone. Having a core set that we can edit every year, make new, make fresh, it gives us extra building blocks. Uh, you know, one of the examples of, the, of that is we have a, a card which does hand buff for you, which is a legendary neutral minion. And that means that you can, you know, support other cards that are playing into that mechanic without needing to have tons of them in your class set. Not only that, but this is also you know something that is free mm -hmm. every single year for every player, right? Yep. One of the, the you know, there's obviously been um, some discussion regarding like the the cost of collecting Hearthstone, the difficulty mm -hmm. of collecting things in Hearthstone, and this is a, a complete refresh of every player's you know collection with a bunch of new stuff that they can use yep. every single year. Absolutely. I mean, we've you know we've made some big steps I think over the last couple of years in terms of approachability of the game. You know, we made a change, some changes last year in terms of no duplicates. Uh, I think it really makes card packs feel more rewarding and more generous. You know, we would encounter these problems where sometimes there's, there are unlucky people out there. The scale of Hearthstone is so big that you know there was some guy out there who would get 
10 epics of the same one. And we wanted to make sure that that person has a good experience. We also gave everybody, free, you know, returning players, free decks. And those were meta-competitive decks. So, you know, this year we thought about it and what can we do that's more? And, you know, the core set, it hits a whole bunch of boxes, like you said. It makes the game more approachable, but I think it just makes the game more fun and more engaging for existing players also. You don't just have the same cards you've been up against every single year since yep. being of Hearthstone. You know, there's, there's still some of them, of course. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to get rid of Tyrion or Fireball. These are yep. cool cards that, you know, satisfy the, the fantasy of being a mage or this major character in Hearthstone. Yep. But maybe someday mm -hmm. they won't be in the core set for yep. a year, but they can come back. And that's one of the things I think is so great about this idea. Mm -hmm. Can we take a step back for a second from the core set specifically mm -hmm. and, and sort of talk a little bit more about the collection system in Hearthstone? Because there's obviously been a lot of discussion in the community, uh, especially with respect to the Tavern Pass yep. uh, this past year. And I was wondering if you could share you know, the team's thoughts on you know, how that has been going mm -hmm. and your sort of plans for the future. Yep. So we've been listening to a lot of player feedback and we've already made changes to the system. You know, we've made it give more gold, more rewards in general. We've also made it easier to complete as well. Um, you know, these are really important things to us. We want the, the Tavern Pass to feel great and for players to you know, really engage with it um, and feel rewarded for their time. So you, when you look at the end of the pass, post level 50, it actually requires a lot less experience per amount of gold that you get. That's something we're looking at, you know, transitioning to for the, for the majority of the track. We want players to feel their progression, get those rewards more quickly. And also on top of that, there's, you know, there are these situations where players just need 10 gold or 20 gold. And we've been very mindful of that. That's really great feedback. And we look for that kind of feedback when we're you know, looking at different forums and you know, different uh, reactions from our, from our players. And we want to make sure that those players that you know, uh, are just missing that little bit of gold for their extra arena ticket or for that extra pack, that there's some way for them to get that too. So, you know, uh, once we've done these changes as well, we're really open to your feedback and we want to hear more from you as our players as well. All right, well, obviously tons of changes coming that I'm super excited about and I feel pretty happy to be involved in mm -hmm. announcing this course set after everything I've done to proselytize for it over the years. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's a bunch of new cards coming from that as well yeah. and I, I expect we'll be seeing them soon. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we revealed uh, a few of the cards today, three of them during the opening ceremony, some of our legendary dragons. Really excited for those, personal favorite of mine. I love Deathwing. Uh, his original classic version is super cool, and the new version, it kind of, it, it keeps the kind of, you know, the spirit of the card. And it does something similar, but it's much more up-to-date and competitive for what Hearthstone is today. So, you know, we're really excited to see them, and, uh, you know, we can't wait to, to show you more, which is going to be coming very soon, in fact, later this week. All right, well, I love me some big dragons, but mm -hmm. I also love formats that are that are not standard as well. You know, we have this whole revamp to the core set, and of course the, the, the classic format coming out, yep. but there's also the game modes. You mm -hmm. know, Hearthstone has a ton of ways to play now, so can you, can you talk a little bit about what's coming to Battlegrounds and mm -hmm. duels in the future? Absolutely. We've spent a huge amount of effort investing in our new game modes. We've really been making them as delivery systems for content, so we've done that groundwork, and for the Year of the Griffin, we're really going to be concentrating on making new content for them. So to give you more information for one of those game modes now, we're going to throw things over to Alec Dawson to give you more info about Battlegrounds. Hey everyone, I'm back with an update on Battlegrounds. Looking back, the Year of the Phoenix was our first full year with Battlegrounds, and it proved to be a wild ride. From dastardly dragons, to perilous pirates, to electrifying elementals, we kept the mode fresh with new heroes, minions, and minion types. Most recently, we've seen Bob visit the Darkmoon Fair with a new spell system, the Darkmoon Prizes. The Year of the Griffin promises even more shenanigans as we swing by to visit Bartender Bob. We are committing more than ever to keeping Battlegrounds a fun and thriving mode for our players. There are significant balance updates just around the corner as we kick off the Year of the Griffin and we can expect to see some of our new mercenaries making appearance as playable Battlegrounds heroes. We've also got plenty of plans for new minion types entering Battlegrounds. It's going to be an absolutely packed year. So, how about a quick look at our next minion type now? In 20.2, we'll be introducing our first Battlegrounds exclusive minion type, Quillbore. From the magical thorn collars of Bristleback to the scouts of Razormane, this fearless minion type knows how to dish out some hurt. Oh yeah, and then there's that guy. He's just soaking up some rays. Currently, we're still in development and finalizing a lot of the details, but their gameplay will revolve around generating and taking advantage 
of their own resource. They're feeling really unique so far, and we can't wait for you to get your hands on this prickly group in a few months. Expect to hear more from us on the updates coming to Battlegrounds soon. Well, I'm sure like so many of you at home, I've been enjoying Battlegrounds a ton over mm -hmm. the past year and a half or so, and I'm even more excited to see where it goes in the future with stuff like Quillbore. I love the Quill Wars. Their art is awesome. I think it's some of the best we've made for Battlegrounds, but it isn't the only game mode that we're going to be putting focus on throughout the year. Take Jules as an example. It's going to be getting some major content updates in Year of the Griffin. We're going to be adding more heroes to Jules. But don't worry, you won't lose any of the progress or the unlocks you have on your existing characters. These are just going to be additional characters, like you might be familiar with from Battlegrounds. And then, of course, there's Book of Heroes. There's mm -hmm. the single-player adventures that players have gone on, learning the stories of characters like Jaina, yep. Rexar, Garrosh, or my boy Uther. Yep. We're going to continue telling the stories. We're going to finish up the Book of Heroes with all ten of the main classes of Hearthstone. And up next is Valera Sanguinar. But Beyond that, we also have the Book of Mercenaries coming, which is going to be telling the story of those 10 characters that we keep mentioning. They're really grounded in Warcraft lore, and we want to make sure that they get their own unique moments. And they'll also be supported by additional content throughout the game, through the various game modes. We're really excited to tell their stories, and we hope that you're all going to love those characters. We've talked a lot about these mercenaries, yep. right? And, and we talked at the beginning of the show about there being a new game mode called Mercenaries. So. Mm -hmm. They're obviously going to be involved in that. Yep. What can you tell me about it? Uh, Mercenaries is it's a big addition coming to Hearthstone. Um, you know, we kind of have this term internally we think about is like premier game modes. So like, you know, Battlegrounds, it's a huge part of Hearthstone. Obviously, you know, traditional standard and wild Hearthstone, that's the other one. But you know, that's been there since the start. Mercenaries is our new kind of premier addition to the game. We've really put a huge amount of effort into it, and we want to make sure it's an awesome, fun experience. In terms of what it specifically is, you know. It takes a lot of different elements from different games. We're really inspired by our peers and by all the other games out there. We love Hearthstone, and as a team, we play a huge amount of it. But we also play other games too. And you know, we're really inspired by tactical RPGs and by roguelikes. And Mercenaries takes elements from both of these kind of categories. So in terms of the combat and the way it plays out, you have these characters and these heroes. And you know, in terms of how you compare it to Hearthstone, it's almost like having three heroes instead of your one hero where you play cards. Your heroes have abilities, and you then decide which abilities to use against your opponent, obviously trying to create powerful combos and synergies. And you know, the way you kind of encounter those com that combat is you progress through a map. And those of you familiar with roguelikes out there, um, you know, it's kind of a traditional map where you progress through different encounters. Some of them might be combat, some of them might be other things, interesting things to do along the way. The really cool thing about Mercenaries, though, is that the progression is permanent. So when you're going through a mission, you get to keep the experience you've earned or the items that you've earned. So it's really awesome in the fact that you know you're playing through as you might ha you might have these really cool characters like Ragnaros, Jaina, and Illidan in the same team. It's a pretty crazy combination, and there's some even more wild things than that in there. But at the end of it, you'll get to take all the rewards that they've earned home with them and improve them. So, you know, if you struggle and don't complete a level, then maybe the next time you will because your characters have improved. So you're talking about how you know, you're, you're going through these missions, you're leveling up, you're getting these rewards. Mm -hmm. So is this something that uses your collection at all, or is it completely separate? It's completely separate. So you're going to have these characters, and they're kind of outside of the normal Hearthstone collection. Much like you know, Battlegrounds is outside of it, normal Hearthstone, and it's kind of its own thing. You know, we really think about Hearthstone as kind of a platform for card games. That's where we've been evolving more towards. And you know, honestly, going back to even before I joined the team, Hearthstone's always kind of been that way a little bit. Like when you think about a Arena, wild, and standard, and then single-player additions to that as well. There really almost, you know, there, there is some interconnectivity, and I think you know a good way to look at that right now is the reward track. So when you're thinking about mercenaries in the future, it's going to link into the reward track. So we want to make sure that however you want to play the game, that is something we're very committed to. However you want to play the game, you're rewarded for what you want to play, and we made big changes to the reward track to adhere for, for that for battlegrounds players. So you talk a little bit about you know these different multiplayer game modes and these single-player game modes. Is this a, a single-player or a multiplayer game mode? 
It's a bit of both. There's a lot of single player uh, in terms of, you know, when you think about the ratio of how much you're gonna do, the majority of leveling up that you're going to do with your characters and the progression is going to be single player. But we do want there to be multiplayer in it also. So we really hope it's gonna turn out to be highly skill-based battles between players. There's a lot of decision making. There's definitely less randomness than there is in traditional Hearthstone. You know, there's still some going to be some random outcomes. Like you can imagine a character like Ragnaros, his iconic deal eight damage to a random target, that's probably something we're gonna lean into with a character like that. But somebody like Illidan, it's probably very precise, has a skill which you know the outcome of it and how it's gonna work out. All right, well we have characters like Jaina and mm -hmm. Illidan and, and all these in addition to the yep. 10 mercenaries. So there's characters new and old across Warcraft. Absolutely. So, you know, in terms of the old characters, we've mentioned a few of those already, but another one that's coming is Tyrion Fordring. He's got a really storied history and he's wielder of one of the most iconic weapons in the game, the Ashbringer. But we also have the mercenaries themselves. And if you look at the Forge in the Barrens trailer, the star of the show is Rakara. She's awesome. She's this powerful orc warrior. Um, and of course, she has the best thing, a cute pet dog. All right, I'm sold. I'm sold. All right, well, mercenaries, it sounds awesome. When can we learn more? When can we get our hands on this? So, you know, we're not quite ready to talk about the dates yet, but we do want to make sure we release mercenaries later this year. And of course, we're gonna be keeping you all up to date with as much as information as we can. Well, that is the final piece of news we have to share with you today, but uh, it's been a lot. Yep. You know, we have the Year of the Griffin coming with Forge and the Barons. We have the all new core set, the classic format. Mm -hmm. We have updates coming to duels and battlegrounds and Book of Heroes, the all new Book of Mercenaries. Yep. And then this new Mercenaries format. There's just a lot going on in Hearthstone this year. It's a huge amount of stuff. You know, we've been putting a, a huge amount of effort into making sure there's always new things for you to come and do whenever you want to play Hearthstone. Speaking of which, make sure to log in today to claim your free legendary for Forge and the Barons, Shadowhunter Vol'jin and visit the shop to claim your 30 years of Blizzard card back. That card back is really unique. It's pretty different than anything we've done, so please make sure to let us know if you like it. Man, this has been seriously awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you to the rest of the Hearthstone team for making this all possible. Yeah, really appreciate it, and thank you so much to you, all of our players. We're really happy to be able to share all of the exciting news coming for Hearthstone. Make sure to stay tuned for our card reveals coming later in the season, and for later this week, for all of our corset cards. Well, my favorite card reveals. Anyway, I'm sure you can't wait for that at home. Thank you all so much for watching this deep dive, and we'll see you all in the year of the Griffin.